It's time for what's trending. They have to win this game against Oklahoma State. They owe Oklahoma State something. Uh, and they got to take care of business on their home floor. First tough loss of this the year. They don't allow losses to disrupt them. 93-83 Oklahoma like, State. They've waited a long time to compete at a higher level. Indeed they have. It's time for What's Trending. What do you hope to see from BYU tomorrow is what we're going to discuss. A revenge game with Oklahoma State. Because don't forget, Oklahoma State beat BYU by 10. I don't think any of you have forgotten, but Tyler, that was one of the more disappointing performances of the year. BYU has a chance to avenge that tomorrow. So what are you expecting in a bounce-back game against the Cowboys? Well, I, I think this season, BYU has always responded. That's one of the things that they talk about all the time. And this, this team, this group... They, they respond to a loss really well. And so that Iowa State loss, missed opportunity. I mean, they, they definitely had that 1-1. That one, one. But, uh, yeah, and trying to come back and avenge a loss against Oklahoma State. And so I, I just expect, I want to see some energy. want to see, you know, it is the last game of the, the regular season. But hopefully they come out with some fight and some energy. We, we haven't seen too many letdowns just from like an energy and effort standpoint. They always respond really only well. Only at Oklahoma? Yeah, may, That's maybe That's the only one Oklahoma. where it was like, whoa, what, you know, at Kansas State was a tough performance as well, but Bureau yeah. ends up winning at Kansas, so they kind of make up for it. <laughs> That's a good one to it was make all, up It's all good. Okay, I'm going to list some things off that happened in that first game, and then let's discuss whether we think that's going to happen in game two. Okay. Spoiler alert, the answer is no. Uh, do we expect BYU to allow 93 points, 60% shooting from Oklahoma State, a Big 12 low 1.43 points per possession, which is a crazy number, five players in double figures, and do we expect BYU to only shoot 23% from three? Do we expect no. any of those things I just said to happen again? Uh, no! It, it would be very rare if, they, if it did. I the, mean, This was the worst loss of the year. Oklahoma State has... Four wins in league. The other three are against kind of bottom four teams. And then there's number 12 net BYU. Like this <laughs> sparkling, shining victory for Oklahoma State. They got BYU in Stillwater. It is not happening tomorrow. BYU is going to bounce back in a big way. I expect a big win for BYU, a comfortable win. With that said, Oklahoma State still a good team, man. Mm -hmm. They lost Bryce Thompson at the end of January to a labrum injury. They've shifted some things around. It's a young lineup. They have, uh, you know, some dudes that, can really can really play. They got a you know a freshman uh, who might be on the all freshman team this year uh, in in um, in Brandon Garrison, the center. He was a McDonald's All American. Mm -hmm. They got Eric Daly Jr. coming off the bench, who's a freshman. He was a U19 USA World Cup team member. Young team. They got some three point shooters and John Michael Wright and Javon Small. Jamiron Keller has uh, been in the starting lineup way more. Oklahoma State is improved. They they almost were four and three in February. This is a game BYU should win big. And it's senior night. Senior night, Ty. you got to respond on senior night. Not to mention, if BYU wins, uh, they have a chance at the five. We'll dive into this in a second. Yeah. If they lose and things <clears throat> shake out poorly, they can drop to an eight. Yeah. So the stakes are high. Yeah. you got to show up in this game. Yeah, there's a lot to play for, right? I mean, it, it is the last game. It is Oklahoma State. They're bottom of the league. But there's a lot to play for for BYU just from a seeding standpoint and, and to avenge that loss. Like, you think about those things. And, and these are, these are storylines when I played that we would talk about. We would talk about these things and talk about guys that played well against us and why they played well against us. You know, you look at Keller, had 22 points against BYU, a guy that wasn't shooting the ball great but just had a great night against mm -hmm. BYU. There, there are matchups like that that are being talked about, and I expect BYU to, to respond in a big way, get up and down, and expect them to shoot the ball well. They're not going to give up 93 points for no, sure. No, especially at home. Um, and you're right, the bounce back ability of, you can put ability on anything and then it's like, oh, this thing you have. Yeah. Your, your talk ability is great, Tyler. Like, the bounce back ability of BYU is really good. You're yeah. right. Um, so BYU must, okay, path to the five seed. Here we go. BYU has to be at Oklahoma State and then they need Kansas to lose to Houston mm -hmm. because BYU owns the tiebreaker over Kansas. That is the situation. Which could happen. Now, if BYU does, it, that, I think that will happen. Yeah. I think both those will happen. I don't think Kansas goes on the road and beats Houston. Kansas has been terrible on the road this year. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to be the number one team in the country on the road? Yeah. Kansas is capable of a lot. I'm not going to say they can't do it, but they're Kansas. But at Houston, woo, that's a tough place to play. Okay, the worst case scenario is this. <laughs> Let's just lay it out just so you know what's unfortunately <laughs> possible. If BYU loses, they finish 9-9 nine nine in league, which is still amazing. It's great. Yeah, We're you just talking that. about the seeding part here. 
Texas Tech and Kansas would uh, each have to have at least 10 wins. So Texas Tech is playing Baylor tomorrow. Texas Tech would need to win. Kansas would need to beat Houston. TCU would need to beat UCF because they don't have the tiebreaker over BYU, so they got to be plus one. Right now they're tied. And Oklahoma would have to beat Texas because BYU does not have the tiebreaker over Oklahoma. This is the worst-case scenario tomorrow. The, the five, six, seven, eight, like that's all in play right now. As high as a five, as low as an eight. And that really changes, um, you know, potential trajectory in the Big 12 tournament, Tyler. For sure. If you're always a five, you're probably waiting, awaiting Texas Tech, mm-hmm. who's probably, or you're hoping to win and then play uh, in that game. Now, Oklahoma State, if West Virginia loses tomorrow, Oklahoma State will be the 13 and not the 14. Okay. And if Oklahoma State wins on Tuesday, it could be back-to-back games with the Cowboys hmm. on Wednesday as the 5-13, as I said, 12-13. Yeah, yeah. 12, 12, yeah. So we'll, we'll see what happens uh, in that. But if BYU is the 5, that'd be tremendous, Tyler. You get to Wednesday, and then you try and win a game and go from hmm. there. Is win a single game the minimum threshold for this team in this tournament, by the way? I, I think so. They've got to at least win one. Okay. I, I think so much of – this time of year is just momentum, right? Okay, you're, you're a lock for the NCAA tournament, but how are you playing as a group? And that, that's as much of this story as anything. How are you playing and the level of basketball that you're playing at? And I think BYU needs to at least get one win. Obviously, if they could get that five seed, it would be, it'd be huge. And so you just have to take care of business and then let the chips fall where they may after that. Uh, but you can't drop one at home. We don't sure. want to talk about it, but if BYU had kind of held on and finished Wednesday, four seed was possible. Yeah. Uh, by mm-hmm. the way, um, you know, knew about this before, but good article by Jay Drew in the uh, Desert News. So Ramadan begins Sunday. So um, there are three Muslim players on the team who uh, observe Ramadan. Um, uh, Tiki Ali Atiki, Fus, and Ali Khalifa. Ali Khalifa has decided to fast during the day. So mm-hmm. he will not be drinking water during the Big 12 tournament. So that will certainly be a challenge. We've seen uh, Hakeem Olajuwon thrived, actually, in the NBA during Ramadan at times. Like, mm-hmm. his points per game went up, mm-hmm. which he attributed to God giving him extra power. We're a culture that fasts and understand what that's like. Faith, right? yeah. And faith and, and whatnot. That will be a physical challenge and emotional and spiritual, right, um, mm-hmm. for Ali Khalifa during this tournament. Now, Fus and Atiki will observe in other ways. They have decided they're going to drink water mm-hmm. uh, during the day. But that could be interesting next week. That, at least physically. That, that could be interesting. And, and I think, but I, one thing along that note, I think BYU's finding, has found this balance between Foose and Khalifa and, mm. and then adding a tiki in there when, when needed. And so You're I not think. You're relying on Ali at the same level that maybe we thought before this Yes, season. yeah, and especially at the beginning of conference play. I think they were overly relying on Ali Khalifa. Because Foose had the hamstring. Foose had the hamstring injury. And I think they found that balance. And so, yeah, if, if, Ali Khalifa needs a rest for a few minutes. I think BYU is ready now to to be able to to do that. Okay, senior night uh, tomorrow of note. Spencer Johnson will play his final game as a Cougar. Traden Christensen, who's a walk-on, who tore his ACL uh, in the fall. We have not seen him. Jackson Robinson uh, is a senior. He will be on it. He does have a year left if he wants to return. But uh, my sense is that Jackson's going to take the opportunity and the hype in the season and probably bounce after this year. It's Mm -hmm. not a report, just a a feeling. Mm -hmm. No Noah Waterman, who is a senior as well. Now, Noah will have to apply for and get a waiver from the NCAA for a much-injured freshman year at Niagara. But if Noah Waterman returns, that would be nice. But uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, Spencer and Traden and and, and Jackson on senior night, Tom? Yeah, I mean... First off, it's it's an amazing thing, amazing career for for all those guys, and congrats to those guys for you know finishing out an unbelievable career. Spencer Johnson, we've talked so much about his journey. It's uh, incredible what he's done. Played at multiple universities and uh, have so much respect for just how he's grinded at BYU to establish a role like he has has been really fun. Traden Christensen has obviously come in and done some really good things. Jackson Robinson. Um, uh, unbelievable uh, career and, and shooter and scorer and so you know wish all those guys the best going forward uh, I think it's fun and exciting for BYU that Noah Waterman wants to come back and play again uh, we've talked about this before like this group coming back next year is going to be unbelievable that I mean what they've done this year is 
is obviously historic and the wins that they've gotten, but they're going to turn around and reload and be able to do it again next year and compete again next year, which is just so exciting. It's weird to think that BYU could be more talented next year. Yeah. You I mean, add Colin Chandler, the highest signed recruit you've ever had. Mm -hmm. Isaac Davis is, uh, you know, wants to be the next Yoli Childs. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens with him. Marcus Adams Jr., we'll see what his future looks yeah. like. Dawson Baker. Uh, oh, you like, reload. Rarely play. We saw him for like a few minutes. Yeah. Um, so that's super exciting. Losing Spencer and Jackson are significant losses in experience and talent. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, BYU's never had a Jackson Robinson. A 6'7 guy yeah. who's 7 foot wingspan, who's played in the SEC, mm -hmm. and now two years at BYU and uh, did a great job. It's had a huge impact on the program. And year two, the jump for him was big, probably the sixth man of the year, which we'll talk about a bit later as well. But uh, congrats to those guys on senior night. We'll talk to Spencer Johnson coming up, by the way.